What's up guys, so here in Queensland, as you can see, we b and b this really, really nice place with a very, very nice tennis court. Um, but you know what I like more than these materialistic things? Knowledge. And that's why I'm very, very proud of why I'm here, to gain more knowledge. As a wise man once said, it's not about the Lamborghinis, it's all about the knowledge. All right, sorry guys, I've always wanted to do that, so if you know, you know. But anyways, we are here in the Gold Coast, in Queensland, to attend the Student Surgical Conference. And essentially what it is, is just having surgeons from different departments come and talk to us, you know, about their medical student life, the process and their journey to get into surgical training, and what life is like now as a surgeon. We also get to do lots of like practical hands-on activities throughout the day, your typical suturing and all that, so it's really really fun. And also this event is to meet different people from different medical schools around Australia and maybe New Zealand as well. And I thought I would just record this journey or this entire experience just in case you missed this conference or you want to see what a student surgical conference looks like and I hope you guys enjoy it and I'll see you tomorrow for day one so we're inside let's got our tags got our bags that's Alex, that's Claudia. We look keen. So here's where we're gonna be for the next few days. guys welcome back so we just came back from the uh, student conference so it's looking a little bit dark now just wanted to you know film right now and give you guys a quick summary from the four speakers that we had today I thought that I'll just share one most important takeaway from each of them uh, that I thought was really really useful so the first speaker was Dr. Jerome Mellon. He's a urogynecologist and basically what he said was the most important thing is if you like to do things with your hands, practical things, then surgery is most likely for you. And he also said that no matter what you do, to always explore your options okay, and try to do things that suit your career. So for example, if you want to go rural and if you want to practice there, then go ahead and do that and not just always do what everyone else does. So that's number one. The second speaker is Dr. Martin Wuschleger and he's a trauma surgeon. And the main takeaway that I got from him was to always think wide, okay, and be ready to make decisions and be okay with your decisions changing and just moving on if the decisions that you make don't work out. That's the most important thing, to be able to switch your mindset whenever it doesn't work and just move on. Our third speaker was Professor Deborah Bailey, who is a pediatric surgeon. And what I got from her talk was uh, this thing called the box rule. So you want to imagine, you know, all the time in the world that you have uh, as a box. It's not going to get any bigger. It's actually going to stay the same or it might get smaller. So we have 24 hours in a day or even less. So what you want to do is you have to decide what you want to put in that box. And so essentially trying to say that, you know, you decide what you want to do with your time. All right, so I can see that it's getting really, really dark. So I'm going to speed this up. Our fourth speaker was Dr. Sandra Krishnan, who is an oncologist and for her, the most important takeaway I got was to always be above your emotions. 
she was just telling us all about the politics that happens in surgery or just in hospital or just work in general and to always be ready to be above your emotions don't act on them too much all the time always remember what's your key objective what's your key purpose so always try to be logical and unbiased and always try to do the right thing I thought that was pretty useful um, I, I think you know it's impossible to do that all the time but it should be something that we strive for as much as we can all right good morning guys today is day two so very very exciting um, what do we have on today's agenda it's roughly the same as day one uh, today you know in the morning we're gonna have all the different talks by the surgeons again but yesterday was all about you know life as a surgeon I think today is more to do with passion we have one of our topics called um, feel your fire and we have a panel Q&A as well so it'll be really interesting to see what people have to ask and the response that the surgeons will give I'll update you guys on that and in the afternoon we have um, those practical workshops again and uh, today is more to do with suturing and I think something to do with bones as well so I can't wait to share it with you guys and I hope you guys enjoy it Alright, hi guys, so it's getting really dark. Um, we just made it back from the conference and as usual, I'm just gonna summarize the key things that I took away from the two talks. Uh, the first one was from Associate Professor Ria Liang, who is a general and breast surgeon. And her talk was titled, Feel Your Fire. And essentially, what she said was, the most important thing is to know that you need that fire in surgery. And I think when she says fire, it means like passion, energy, resilience, resources, all of that. You definitely need those. And the next thing that she said though is to always remember that you can't always be using your fire or you can't always be fueling your fire, which just means that, you know, there are some days where you just don't feel your best, you don't feel 100% and it's totally okay. And second talk was from Dr. Kelvin Kong, who is an ENT surgeon and his talk was just a story about his you know, surgical life. And the key takeaway from his talk is that you need to be a pyromaniac. I had no idea what it meant, so I had to do a quick Google. Um, but basically, you know, just means that you have to start uncontrollable fires, you know, just start anything that you feel really passionate about and you never know who is going to see it and who will back you for it. Hi guys, so we're in the BMV now. It's pretty late but I totally forgot to uh, tell you guys what I got out of the panel Q&A that happened today. And basically there are three main questions that I thought was really, really useful. The first one was, what can I do as a medical student to set myself up for surgical training? And the overall takeaway or overall message I got was, there are a lot of different things that you can do, but the most important thing is to be really keen and interested in whatever you're doing and to follow through with whatever you said you're going to do and if it's something that you're really passionate about then the time and effort will feel you know, inconsequential you know if you look at it in the bigger picture all right so question number two was how important is research for surgical training basically a hundred percent there is a very strong focus on evidence-based medicine and that's why it's important for you know, sur future surgeons to do research and understand the literature. Mm, but the important message is to choose an area that you're really, really interested in so that you can work on that research you know, in the future over a longer period of time rather than just that few years just to get the extra points for surgical training. So that's the overall message that I got. And the last question, which is a very classic 
medical student question, which is how to balance work and life. Essentially, you don't. Bad jokes. Um, what I got was to always remember that at least for surgery, it is a marathon, not a sprint. I think one of the surgeons said that a lot of people have a, you know, a tunnel vision where they say, all right, I'm just going to grind really, really hard for a few years and therefore I can chill you know, once I'm up there. But I think the message that they were trying to get at is, you know, that's not the case with surgery. It's just always going to be grinding for many, many years to come. And so understanding that, you know, it's a marathon, so it's important to just take it chill take it slow, focus on, you know, the long term, right? It's, it's about the long game. And that way you're able to find more um, sustainable um, happiness and enjoyment in um, surgery. So those are the three things that, or three questions that I thought was really, really useful and I just wanted to share with you. All right, good morning, guys. It's 7.30 in the morning. It's the last day of the conference. It's really early, so you can see I'm very, very tired. But today's conference, it should be pretty fun. Um, the talks are mainly about student life and how to get better at studying or managing our life and so on, rather than trying to inspire us to become surgeons or something. And um, with the hands-on workshops, we got plastics, neuro and so on. So it should be really fun. And I hope we'll enjoy the last day of conference and I'll update you guys later. So I'm in my bed because, as you know, we got to see we were at 7.30 in the morning because they told us to, but we kept waiting and there was nothing going on and we were super tired so we decided to head back to our BMV and we might have accidentally napped for way too long and missed out on some talks, so um, yeah, but that's alright. I thought what I'll do instead is I'll summarize my overall experience with ASSC and, you know, let you guys know three main things that I got out of this experience coming in at number three um, if you like to eat I think this event will make you very happy like me because you know get really nice things to eat you know morning tea lunch dessert <clears throat> super super nice stuff well cooked and they just kept coming so I was just eating to my heart's content you know loved it coming in at number two was the um, speeches given by the surgeons I think what I really liked about it was that it was very open and honest you know, most of it you know, are things that we already know. For example, you need to have passion, you need to choose the things that you actually like. But some surgeons actually admitted to the fact that there isn't much of a work-life balance for some, you know, surgical departments. And I liked it because many of the times we talk to different people and they might sugarcoat it a, lo a little bit too much. And I know they have good intentions because they don't want to discourage people from going into surgery. But I think it's true that for some, you know, surgical training is just way too competitive and there are just too many things you have to do that it's impossible to achieve that work-life balance that people talk about. Um, so it's just nice, I think, to have that honesty. Uh, and coming in at number one would be the hands-on workshops that you guys would have seen a few clips about. I think it was super fun uh, being able to you know, try things with my hands and having an experienced demonstrator talk us through that process as well so that was definitely the main highlight of this event so overall i definitely recommend all of you to you know join this event wherever you can i think the next one is going to be held in adelaide so definitely do sign up for it i think whether you want to do surgery or you don't want to do surgery, you definitely get something out of this experience. So do check it out and have lots of fun.
Alright, thank you so much for staying till the end. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Whether or not you're a medical student, I hope that you managed to learn a thing or two. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.